guys, welcome back to the Rock Rockford Ordnance. We've got an unboxing video for you today, so come on along, check it out. Well guys, here she is in all her glory. We don't do many unboxing videos, but I figured uh, since we just got it home, why not lay it out here on one of our reloading tables and uh, just see what it's all about. Nice sturdy box from Mossberg. I'm used to those arsenals and all those AKs, you know, they're like paper, but it's a pretty nice little box. Comes in a bag, Let's slide her out and see what we have. There it is, guys, in all its glory. The Mossberg 590 retrograde. Got the heat shield. Got the retrograde corn cob forend, stock. Nice brown pad to match. Of course, it's got the bayonet lug right there. Still has its uh, Mossberg clip on there. We got it with the bead sight because I thought that was more uh, in the trench gun fashion, so to speak. But uh, yeah, there she is. What do you think, guys? I think it's time for a closer look. What do you think? Well, guys and girls, here it is. After our little unboxing there, this is the Mossberg 590 Retrograde. So, notice I didn't say 590A1. There is a difference. Used to be, these guns came out in uh, 2020. And back then you had a retrograde of the 590A1 and the 500. Well, now you have the 590, 590A1, and the 500. Why did I get this one? Well, I'm going to get a 590A1, but in its normal configuration with the uh, synthetic hardware. This I wanted for one simple reason, and that was the bead sight. To me, it just looks more like the trench gun, right? The 500 kind of fits that role of like a police riot gun. 590A1 with the ghost ring sights. Just a little too modern for what I consider this one. I think this fits more that trench roll or uh, trench gun roll or remake of uh, with the bead sight. It's got pretty much everything else. It is missing a couple things and we'll go over that. Um, some I don't mind, some eh, maybe we'll upgrade, we'll see. But uh, I guess we'll start back here. It comes with a nice ventilated pad, fairly soft for what it is. Um, the really nice thing on this gun is the walnut wood, right? So it's kind of a matte finish. It does gloss up in certain areas, um, or maybe just came out a little glossier from the factory. But uh, I did oil this thing up. It's been a long time since I actually got a blued gun, and it is blued. It's a matte bluing on this. The 590A1 comes with a parkerized finish, and the 500s actually have a regular blue finish. It's sort of matte, but a little shinier than this. I think this one's perfect. Um, but this walnut furniture is really, really nice. It's got fine checkering. Um, it's stamped, obviously. They don't do hand checkering anymore. It'd be too expensive. I was looking at it and thought I noticed an area. I guess not. Looked like they were off a hair in one area or it was a little rough. But no, it seems just fine. It's actually a fairly nice job. Um, with the walnut stock, you get the walnut forend and it's that corn cob design. I used to not like these in my younger days, but it's really grown on me, that retro look. My dad had an Ithaca, um, uh, what was it, a Buckmaster or something like that. They were the Ithaca police guns, the riot guns. They had the orange uh, triangular plastic front sights. And I always liked that gun, that was parkerized. And this reminds me somewhat of that, but with that trench gun flare. So I thought it was super cool, and I like this corn cob uh, foreign. And really, you get a lot of nice grip to it. It's got such a great sound, doesn't it? Buy a shotgun. 
Anyhow, um, I was always a Remington 870 guy, right? Uh, but I really like the Tang safety, um, at least on a standard stock. With a pistol grip, not so much. <laughs> but uh, with this, it's so easy, ambidextrous, no problem. Um, like we mentioned, the flat bluing, it's really nice. It does have a few shinier marks here and there from some wear in the box, I guess. I'm uh, not sure. But uh, it's not, I'm sure it was perfect at one time, but either in the box or at the dealer, who knows. But uh, not a big deal. The one thing I don't like, and you know, it was always was the 590A1 had the metal trigger guard, the 500s had the plastic. Well, this is a 590, granted not an A1, but it has the polymer trigger guard and trigger and the polymer safety. Now, could we replace it? Sure, I guess we could. Is it worth it? I don't know. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. We always could though. We could always get those parts and put them in, I guess. Um, it is drilled and tapped on top. So Mossberg does sell their ghost ring sights. I guess we could install them if I wanted to. But uh, the reason I wanted it, like I said, was the brass bead sight. Um, moving forward, the trigger, while heavy, yeah, not really that heavy. It's not bad actually for a shotgun. Something I'll have to get used to is not having a loading gate. The 870s always did. It's kind of nice. Um, they go right in and go right up. One thing I did notice is the edges here are extremely sharp. I've never noticed that on my 870. I've loaded tens of thousands of rounds into it. And uh, loading this the first time, I thought I was cutting my thumb a couple times. Um, I don't know if we could chamfer that a little or what, I'd, but I'd hate to ruin the bluing on it. But it is nice not having that loading gate. You can drop it and run it. Um, that being said, it does hold nine rounds, eight plus one. Uh, with the 20 inch barrel. When you go to the 18 inch barrel, which it is available in, uh, you drop down to, I believe, seven plus one. Uh, it might be six plus one, I'm not sure, but this one is eight plus one. Really nice, you've got dual extractors on here, so that round is shucking. You also have dual action bars here, so it's nice and smooth, don't have to worry about it. I took this gun out of the box, I sprayed it completely down with ballastol, let it soak for a minute, wiped it down, and uh, with just a little bit of working in the action, it's pretty darn smooth. Two fingers. Um, not bad at all. Uh, loading it, like I said, is a little bit stiff yet on the final rounds. We mentioned 20 inch barrel. They make it in the 18. I wanted the 20 because of the extra capacity. But what I, uh, I guess I read it, but I don't know. It didn't really dawn on me at first, but you don't get the heavy barrel. It's a 590, but again, it's not the A1. So you get the standard barrel, not the thick barrel. Um, fixed chokes, um, cylinder bore, and uh, really, what else do you need, right? All we're going to put through this thing is slugs and buckshot. So that's really all you want. Uh, the heat shields are kind of cool. And at first I thought, well, it's just kind of for show. It looks cool. But the other day, I'm out at the range with my 1301 uh, Beretta. <laughs> And I think I, I just got done shooting and I went to grab it like I do my trap gun, and, but this hand, and holy cow, I burnt the heck out of this. We were shooting some slugs. Didn't even have all that many, well, I guess we had about 20 rounds through it. And it was hot, so that won't happen with this. So I guess it does serve a purpose. They're on there, I never had really looked at these that close, but they're on there nice and tight. There's no movement, no rattle. They clip around the barrel down here and then they bolt up up here. So super nice and solid and they look great. I, I think so, it's just such a good looking gun. 
what else? Like I said, eight round mag tube goes all the way to the end of the barrel. This does have one feature that the 500 doesn't and that's a removable cap on the end to clean out your magazine tube. Um, things come apart a bit different and the mag tube is not as accessible on the 500 as it is the 590. When I pulled it out of the box, the swing stud was screwed in the end here. That's okay, I guess, but down here on this uh, ring, you've got a little lug here. That lug does something cool I'll show you in a minute, but it's also tapped here so you can relocate that uh, stud from the end here, which I do kind of like the look to here. So I may get another stud to screw in here because uh, it is open then, the tapped hole is open to water or whatever. So we'll probably put another one in there, but I like it here for the sling. I think we're going to get like a, uh, oh, a surplus sling off a of Grand or an M1. I think that'll look really, really cool on this. And I think this will just be a better position for it to hang straight down. Um, kind of cool they come with the studs. I like that. So what's the other lug here for? Well, of course, a lot of you know, and it's super cool and gives it that final trench gun feel but uh, it's got a bayonet lug. The only shotgun I know of with one. Um, there is the M7 bayonet. And I think it'll, it'll take M7, right? M M7 with the M8 uh, sheath. And I think it'll take the M8 bayonet as well, or M9, whatever number I'm off one, I guess. But uh, how cool is that? <laughs> It doesn't uh, get much cooler than a bayonet on a combat shotgun, right? Or a retro World War I, World War II trench gun look. I just think it's really neat and uh, just kind of rounds out the collection a little bit. Um, I'd love to have a real trench gun, but of course the price is they're crazy. So unless I came across a hell of a deal, this will suffice, but it, it scratches that itch, if you know what I mean. So, really cool. The bead sight is uh, easy to pick up and all. For those of you concerned, length of pull is about 13 and 3 quarter inches. Um, it's a hair long for me. My trap gun is a little shorter than this. Um, so it is a little long, but again, it's a combat trench shotgun. No problem. Uh, we can get around that. Overall length is about 41 inches. It's funny in the specs, this gun they have marked at seven and a quarter pounds, and then the 590A1, which everything's the same except they have a steel safety, steel trigger guard, and the heavy barrel is actually listed a quarter pound lighter. So I don't know why, but uh, maybe they reversed them because the uh, 590 20 inch barrel this one and the uh, this one's listed at I think they may have them changed around because the 20 inch barrel uh, 590 is listed at seven and a quarter pounds then the 18 inch 590 is listed at seven pounds and the 20 inch 590A1 with the heavy barrel and steel uh, trigger guard and safety is listed at seven pounds. Doesn't make much sense. I think they meant to put seven and a quarter on the 590A1 and then seven pounds each on the other two, although that doesn't make much sense because uh, you get two extra inches of barrel here. So who knows? I don't know. But uh, yeah, 41 inches overall. Uh, we mentioned improved cylinder um, choke in this, um, fixed, and uh, yeah, like the safety. Safety's a little stiff, oiled it up, it's wearing in, it's getting there, no problem. Maybe because it's plastic, I don't know. Um, but all in all, a nice feeling shotgun. The controls are easy to use too. You've got the uh, release right here behind 
the trigger guard, which makes more sense to me than the Remington up here. But either way, Remington, you'd be here, and uh, this, you're back here. But, you know, it does make more sense. You're not crossing over that trigger, so uh, works good. Like I said, trigger feels decent, nice. Uh, wood is nice. Everything is certainly solid. What you're hearing is that um, bayonet, but you take that off and boom. Um, would have been nice if this uh, or the 590A1 was available with the bead sight. Um, that would be the perfect gun to me, but uh, yeah, we lose the uh, steel here and steel here and we lose the heavy barrel, but um, other than that, same guns. Really cool and really good looking. I can't wait to get this thing out to the range and uh, just have some fun with it, you know? Uh, compare it with some of our other shotguns. I've had so much fun with shotguns lately. Uh, the Beretta, this, of course the Vepr, uh, the VR80, and we're gonna have kind of a little shootout with them all. So it's cool to see a gun that has that historic retro look. It's cool to see a blued gun. And it's cool to see a gun with some pretty wood on it too. Um, and it's all made in the USA. How do you go wrong? Um, I think all we're gonna look for is that sling. Uh, this is off my Colt, so I'll have to get another one for this. And maybe we'll look into the parts for this. I wonder if you can get a heavy barrel for this. Hmm, that might be something to look at, huh? Oh, and I do want to get another stud to screw in here. That's probably the first thing I'll do along with the sling. So, uh, yeah, just a cool piece of the collection, kind of a, a conversation piece, that's for sure. And cool to have. Seven pounds, not too heavy. Um, good length, feels good, shoulders well, and should be a lot of fun. So, I hope you guys like it. It's uh, certainly something different, certainly something cool, and uh, watch for the video coming out. Just wanted to bring this one to you quick, unbox it, show it to you, go through the features and all, and then we'll bring you a range video too. So, stay tuned. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for everything you do for the channel. Please like, please subscribe below. Please share the video on your Facebook uh, with your friends. Uh, tell some people about it. We certainly could use the help. Um, add some comments down here. Let us know if you have one and how you like it. And uh, we try to comment back. It helps the algorithm, keeps things going. Um, hey, support the Second Amendment speak out. You have to be outspoken. They are. We need to as well. Um, stay safe. Protect you and your family. And as always, Rockford Ordinance out.